Right. Okay. okay. Are we live? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. I gavel again. Uh, good evening to everyone. Welcome to the Dare County Board of Education meeting. We are meeting at Manio High School. Today is November 10th, 2020, and I'm sorry for the delay. It's about 5.08. We were waiting for our technical um, things to be ready to go. Uh, we're happy to be meeting um, virtually. We welcome all the people who are joining us by phone. Uh, in our meeting tonight, we have our board members. I'm B. Bass Knight, Chair of the Board, Mary Lyon Balance, Vice Chair, Harvey Hess, Frank Hester, Margaret Lawler, Joe Tauber, David Twitty, Dr. Farley and his senior leadership team are here. We have many people from our school staffs with us tonight, our attorney Brian Shaw, Georgia Sellers, our administrative assistant, and I uh, saw Barbara, Barbara Davidson from the Dare Education Foundation. You back there? <laughs> Can't see you because of the poll. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and we have some special guests with us who will be introduced later. We're also happy to have with us um, Dare County Commissioners, Chairman Bob Woodard, uh, Vice Chair Wally Overman, and Rob Ross. So we thank you for being here tonight. And we thank all of you for being with us um, via phone. Would you please join me in a moment of silence? Thank you. Um, as is our tradition, we um, alternate uh, the welcome at each school. And um, I usually um, am so assigned to Manuel Elementary School. Uh, we had to move the meeting tonight due to a deep clean at that school. Um, so I am giving the welcome this evening. Um, as I said, we are still uh, under the mass gathering order of 25 people indoors, and I understand today the governor has changed those requirements, and that will go, we'll do that going forward. Um, so we thank you. We thank um, Manu High School for allowing us to come here, and Mr. Price, I'm sorry that we are not at Manu Elementary School, but I hope all things will go well there. Um, we are in week three of our in-person instruction, and while we have experienced some setbacks, Overall, our return to face-to-face -face school has been very successful. We appreciate our students, our teachers, our staffs for following all the safe, healthy protocols. I know it's not easy to wear a mask all day. We're sitting here in masks tonight, and it's not, not easy, and we are socially distanced as well. Uh, but that measure is a measure that will keep us all safe, I hope. I'm very grateful to our teachers and our staffs for the work they have done and that what they are continuing to do to ensure success for every student, whether they are in person or virtual. We are asking our teachers to prepare lessons, to teach in person and to teach remotely, all of which commit, uh, cause them to make a large commitment, even larger than they do every single day when we are in normal times. Um, our students are very excited to be back in the classrooms and the smiles on their faces have truly been heartwarming. Our virtual teachers and students are excelling as well and Dare County was prepared thanks to Dr. Farley and his team for all they did to prepare us for virtual learning and we are making every single educational path work for our students. I want to give the thanks to Dr. Farley and his team for the time and the effort and the expertise they have given to reopening our schools and to meeting all the COVID challenges. Among our many blessings at this time of Thanksgiving are all the employees of Dare County Schools and their selfless dedication to the education of our students. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you and may your blessings be great. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Um, board members, before you, you have the uh, agenda. I will entertain a motion to approve that agenda for the evening. Madam, Madam Chair, move we approve the agenda. Second. A motion from Mr. Twitty and a second from Ms. Balance. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Agenda is approved, approved unanimously. Uh, the next item on the agenda are announcements. And uh, Dr. Farley, would you please? It's good? OK, now we are. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, too, want to thank Chairman Woodard, Vice Chairman Overman, and Rob Ross for joining us tonight and for your unwavering commitment to support of the school system. Appreciate it greatly. Um, uh, Madam Chair did introduce Barbara Davidson. I did want to introduce Barbara tonight formally. This is a, be our first meeting uh, with the Board of Education. She's the new Executive Director of the Dare Education Foundation. She's hit the ground running, and we're very proud to be working with her. Welcome, Barbara. Um, he's not here this evening, but I did want to recognize our outstanding Director of Transportation, Alex Chandler. Um, many of us received uh, wonderful email from Sheriff Dowdy yesterday recognizing Alex for the, the work that he did. Um, Sheriff Dowdy and the Sheriff's uh, Office um, run a Camp Salt for students during the summer and Alex went way above and beyond uh, out in the woods behind First Flight High School where the setting is uh, to bring out buses on a daily basis so that kids could not only participate in the camp in those settings and activities but have Wi-Fi access so that they could continue to do their remote learning as we moved into the start of the school year. So many thanks to Alex, who's top notch, and I want to appreciate uh, Doug Dowdy, great supporter of our school system, uh, for recognizing Alex. Um, next, just some comments on reopening of schools. Uh, Ms. Bass Knight covered uh, many of the things uh, that I was going to mention, but I am um, I'm very proud of um, our administrators and our teachers. And um, despite all of the cases and the quarantine that's going on is almost on a daily basis and trying to uh, navigate um, the outcomes of the pandemic, by all accounts, we had an extremely smooth opening, um, two schools, um, and I put um, all of that on our administrators and the collaborative efforts and being prepared. In the three or four months that we spent over the summer on a daily basis and making sure that we had the conditions for staff and students to return safely. And by all accounts, we, we still have some, some challenges. It's very difficult from a staffing standpoint when we've got face-to-face -face instruction, we've got teachers we're asking to teach remotely while they're also teaching face-to-face -face, and then trying to staff a virtual school, <clears throat> excuse me, particularly at the high school level where we're offering 120 courses. So in some ways, we're, we've got the the high school challenges are, are many and great. In some ways, we're holding that uh, house together with sticky tape and some, some rubber cement um, and how we're being able to accomplish everything that we're doing. But it speaks volumes to the commitment of our staff members, our teachers, and our parents. And um, we're, we're extremely proud of the work that's going on uh, in Dare County Schools. We have, as you know, we've had um, at least uh, five um, different uh, situations develop in the last 12 days where we've had to quarantine several staff members and teach and uh, and students um, the case count is um, about 201 kids who currently are being quarantined and 29 staff so that's current and the staffing is that's a dramatic number and so we are um, really asking a lot out of a lot of employees who are double and triple down in on responsibilities to make sure that we're serving kids who are quarantined and remote, the students who in the hybrid model are remote, face-to-face, -face, and again, virtual. So uh, we're holding it together the best that we can. It's not perfect, um, but we have kids who are in our buildings who want to be there. Um, we have smiling faces in our buildings. You know, when you can see, uh, you, you can see glows in eyes, let me put it that way. We're wearing masks, eyes. yes, you yes. Eyes. Um, but we got the overwhelming amount of feedback from our administrators and teachers that kids were really excited to be back in school. And I've received several emails from parents who felt like a light has gone off in their, their child's world, getting back and seeing their friends and be able to socialize and be back into some normalcy. So, um, so we're, we're problem solving. Uh, on a daily basis, and I tell my administrators often, um, our primary role is to be problem solvers, and we're doing that. And fortunately, um, we have a great working relationship with the health department, 
Um, when we are notified of a positive case, we drop everything. We being four or five of my administrators, our school principals, um, our school principals have called every single parent um, when, it, when uh, someone has to be quarantined and just a uh, question we often get. So just to clarify, the health department officials, Dr. Davies is the uh, person or that is the department that determines who is to be quarantined. Dare County Schools does not do that, okay? So we, we problem solve in, in vet situations in providing, uh, you know, in today's example. There was a second grade class at Main Elementary School where uh, it was a positive case um, with one of the stakeholders who was in the classroom and we had to pinpoint, you have to typically walk back um, depending upon the situation. Um, so in today's case, we knew whoever was in that classroom today, uh, based upon the health department's uh, determination was gonna be quarantined. It doesn't always work that way when it's live. It could be you, someone is tested positive overnight and then you have to figure out, there's periods of time when you try to figure out, uh, does the person have symptoms? Uh, they've got a system following state protocols uh, and working through and trying to determine who needs to quarantine and why or who doesn't. So that determination is made by the health department. Dare County Schools is problem solving on who, where, and what. And then we are making personal phone calls to parents uh, and having personal conversations with staff members and then we are also sending home a, um, after the personal contact over the phone, we're sending home a letter from the health department that comes directly from me and talks about, that's really good information. Here's why uh, your child has to quarantine. Here's the period of time, here's assistance. And then Dr. Davies is going above and beyond because every time that we've got a, uh, you know, we've had several um, situations with 20, 35, 50, 60 kids um, she's doing a webinar for parents the next day. So she makes herself available. There's good information we're sending home. We send home an FAQ and then we're able to, um, bless you, we're, we're able to um, problem solve. So it is tricky. Um, a question that I sometimes get is why aren't you telling us exactly um, who uh, is the, who's the positive, um, uh, COVID, uh, uh, who's the student or, or staff member who's been identified as a positive case. And we have to protect um, personal confirmation, uh, uh, you know, confidential information and anonymity. And so that's why we've been using the stakeholder term um, or the direct contacts. So um, we're doing the best we can um, under not perfect conditions, but our, our folks are making it work. And, um, you know, it's the, fluid nature of this pandemic and what we're dealing with. And as you all know, and I'm sure have heard, there's sounds like a lot of light at the end of the tunnel with, a, with vaccines that are coming. And so if we can kind of push through um, and keep up all the things that we're doing with social distancing and wearing masks, um, we're hoping for better times ahead. In the meantime, um, we feel like we are doing everything that we can for kids, which is the Derrick County way of doing things and, and how we do business, so. Um, that's all I have for announcements and or speeches. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Dr. Harley. And I know every board member up here echoes your, your thanks. And we all appreciate what everyone in the school system is doing to educate our kids. And that's what it's all about. Uh, the next items we have on our agenda is recognitions. And Dr. Keith Parker will be handling those. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. We, Superintendent Farley, we would like to present a couple of recognitions to you tonight. We're gonna to start by asking our Director, Career and Technical Education Dir Director, Dr. John Donlin, to come forward. He's gonna recognize some of our Career Development Coordinators, um, and this is um, Career Development Coordinator Month, and so Dr. Donlin is going to um, speak on that and recognize some of those folks, and we, are not able to give the recognition to the staff tonight. They're not present with us, but um, John and myself and Principal Price are going to provide these certificates and recognitions um, to staff tomorrow. So, Dr. Donald? Well, 
that's what I was going to say, so. <laughs> uh, I'll try to work for you. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Board of Ed members, and Dr. Farley. Y'all are all kind of dispersed this evening. <laughs> Pretty neat. Uh, I'm here to share with you some, something that I feel very positive this evening. Uh, you know, I'm pretty new in this uh, CTE director position, and I just want to share with you that I've experienced, uh, and I'm very thankful for this creative group of teachers. They're very professional, and they're really hardworking, uh, and it's uh, all the teachers are right now, and, and I'm just really stoked to be working with this group of teachers. It's, it's actually challenging, and it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, someone else agrees with me. Uh, his name is Governor Roy Cooper. And he has proclaimed November as Career Development Month and specifically proclaimed November the 18th as Career Development Coordinator Day. So a little bit about what career development is all about for you. The mission of career and technical education is to empower all students to be successful citizens, workers, and leaders in a global community. CTE gives purpose to learning by emphasizing real-world skills and practical knowledge. Programs in career and technical education are designed to contribute to the broad educational experiences of students, including the basic skills such as reading, writing, and mathematics, as well as their ability to work independently and as part of a team, to think creatively, solve problems, and utilize technology. They utilize a lot of technology, but I've learned that so far. These tools and experiences make school more relevant and ensure students are ready for the real world. Whether students plan to further their education in community colleges, technical schools, four-year colleges and universities, or receive on-the-job training, or pursue careers in the military, CTE can be the first step in a pathway toward productive employment and citizenship. Bear County Schools currently has 27 teachers and coordinators in our middle and high schools. This evening, I would like to recognize by name the five Dare County Schools Career Development Coordinators in our secondary schools. I'll be delivering their certificates to their schools as they're obviously not here. Our CDCs are Ashley Bassnight, she's at First Flight Middle School. Debbie Poland is at Manio Middle School. Suzanne Jeanette, K. Patter Secondary School, Tara Wheeler at Manio High School, and Jenny Roots is currently our intern, thank goodness, CDC at First Flight High School. She did come in after Mary Jo retired, and I'm very thankful to have her expertise over there. Our CTE teachers will also receive certificates and recognitions when I visit their schools. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Donlin. We're now going to recognize um, some of the outstanding staff at Menio Elementary School, and we're going to ask Principal Price to come forward and um, highlight those staff at this time. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board, and Superintendent Farley. First of all, I'd like to say, Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve as a principal at Manuel Elementary School. Uh, this is a, my first year here. I'm more than thrilled to what I'm being able to experience with my teachers. But as I'm committed to this school and committed to making an extraordinary school for my children, um, this is not a task I do alone. So tonight, I'd like to recognize several of our amazing teachers here at MES. First, Ms. Holly Rittenberry was elected by our staff as a 2021 Teacher of the Year and she is currently our special team leader and music teacher. In addition, she has been an all-star during remote learning and even hosted a virtual Halloween chorus production. The next teacher I'd like to recognize is Ms. Sabrina Ramirez. She's an amazing third grade teacher who was part of our brainstorming team surrounding the book choice for our virtual read aloud that I'll share a little bit later with you all. In addition, she continues to pursue professional development where she enrolled herself in Teach Your Heart Out this summer and also enrolled in virtual PD classes that begin in January. The following teacher recognition tonight will be Ms. Marley Boyd. She is our ITF librarian and was most recently hired in March 2020. And to say the least, she has hit the ground running since joining our MES family. 
Uh, most recently, she applied for a DEF grant to increase our bilingual techs by 60% and has taken over social media within the building where we have seen an increase in family connectivity. Lastly, she has supported the virtual read aloud with extracurricular activities like the virtual poetry slam competition and has delivered PD both in-house and at district level. Lastly, I would like to recognize Carol Dunn, who is our ITF and specialist teacher. She has been a vital part of our school's remote learning and productivity and has personally handled all the hardware that has been rolled out at Manny Elementary School. In addition, she has also been a vital contributor to our virtual staff read aloud and our revamped daily morning announcements, where our staff members, including myself, sign up and record daily to all of our students every morning. And this is um, started once we were in remote learning in August. Thank you. Madam Chairman, that concludes this portion of our recognition. We do uh, have a couple of additional recognitions we're going to do later in the program, but for this part of the agenda, that concludes the recognitions we have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Parker. And thank you, and congratulations to all of the staff members who were recognized. Um, Curtis, I want to say I love your morning message every morning on Facebook. <laughs> you do a great job. Thank you. And we appreciate all that you're doing. We're, we're trying to get him to smile and be a little more enthusiastic. I think so. <laughs> Have y'all seen his messages on Facebook in the morning? They're really good. <laughs> it's a morning message from Manny Elementary. So that's great. Um, all right. Uh, next item, instructional highlights, and Kelly Flora is going to share those with us. Good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, distinguished board members, and Dr. Farley. I'm always in awe when I watch teachers, administrators, and staff members come together to creatively engage and excite their students with learning, whether those students are virtual or face-to-face. Tonight, Principal Curtis Price is going to show us how the MES crew brought the love of literacy to a whole different level with their virtual read aloud. So at this time, please help me welcome again, <laughs> Principal Curtis Price. I'm not gonna just talk in front of y'all like I'm a comedian or anything, but <laughs> we're gonna go over here on this side just to make it synchronous. <laughs> so, um, all right, can you hear me now? Okay. So I'd like to begin by giving you guys a little bit of a heads up about this virtual read aloud that we decided to give to all of our students and families um, during remote learning and then it, um, with Come Back Face to Face, we continued it. Um, so I'll give you a little highlight of this with a little video montage for your viewing, viewing pleasure. So in August, we decided to schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings with all of our staff members and ask them the same four questions. Um, this has been a routine that we've done in the district and I was um, a part of this when I started with Ms. Childress and it's been a great way to really learn about your staff and get a pulse check of how the building was before you came in and then some expectations that you can draw from those we're moving forward. Um, these conversations were amazing. They established relational trust. And one of these conversations I had was with Ms. Ramirez, where we brainstormed the virtual staff read aloud. She then took lead on this project and found the book, The Last Fifth Grade of Emerson Elementary, with the help of Ms. Molly Holliman, who's an educator on loan, I believe, for Dare County Schools. Um, this book met our idea needs because our goal was to get a book that had multiple character perspectives that would allow multiple staff members to join in on the reading. As you will see in a second, my staff and students have really enjoyed this project and the book itself was a great read. For your reference, the book is written in first person poems from 18 students who are in a fifth grade class where their teacher has asked them to journal this school year because there's a possibility that the school itself could be torn down and turned into a supermarket. Throughout the story, you get to learn about how different each character is what they like, and even how they express themselves differently based on their home life, family situations, and interest, which really helped our students connect. There's even a bilingual student in the story that we had one of our DLI teachers read. So here's a quick video montage for your viewing pleasure. Hope you enjoy.
March 13th, Turtle by Edgar Lee Jones. Made from walnut shell, green felt for feet, head, tail, sitting in my hand. I put it on the table by his bed. Georgia, page 159, March 16th, right now. Right now in Ms. Hill's fifth grade, 18 students are quietly writing poems. Right now, members of the Board of Education are touring Emerson Elementary. They're getting closer to our classroom. This morning, someone covered the fifth grade hall with posters. Right now, everywhere I look, I see three small words, save our school, three big letters, S-O-S. -S. Right now, I'm wondering, will Ms. Stifler be proud of our initiative? August 29th, running for president. My dad says if this school closes down, we'll get to go somewhere better. My mom's a major in the army. She says the way to make things happen is to take charge. I'm stepping up and being a leader. I got Soshana and Brianna to help me with my campaign. Vote for me if you wanna say goodbye to bathroom doors that don't shut right, sweating in classrooms with broken AC, grungy windows, grimy desks, basketball hoops without any nets. I can't understand why so many people want to save this rundown old building. We deserve to go to school somewhere nice. It's our right. Vert for me if you agree. Report cards. When my brother and me get all A's and B's, my mom takes us out for fondue. Fruit, brownies, and cake, all dipped in a lake of chocolate marshmallow goo. We have so much fun, but when the bill comes, I see that look on mom's face. Our money's real tight. I wish that tonight we'd eat dessert at our plate. Brick wool, bright faces, one girl in a blue hijab, smiles at the, her teacher. Beside the children, a teacher stands tall, so proud, her scar a scarf flutters a flag. A Tanka poem for Phoenix. My sister and me, side by side on the mural, Phoenix is smiling. My hand holds her hand so tight, no one can pull us apart. September 26th, Lucky Hat. Blue, my favorite color, pinstripe like the Yankees, my favorite baseball team. The bill is perfectly broken in, just the right amount of curve to it. My mom promised not to wash it, ever. Dust and sweat from my winning games. I didn't know hats are not allowed during spelling tests. I swear I wasn't cheating. Miss Hill, please give me my lucky hat back. February 13th, Valentine Diamante. Valentine, peak frilly card. Opening, reading, smiling. Hearts, love, hugs, friendship. Embarrassing, sweet note from my BFF, Sydney. November 6th, a limerick. There once was a girl named McCain who sat next to someone insane. He thought it was cool to act like a fool, but his poems gave her a migraine. El Palomito. Espero el viernes la semana entera. La clase de música. Cuando canto, muestro cómo me siento. Alegre, triste. Cuando canto, mis palabras suenan claras, fuertes. Pero cuando hablo inglés. Edgar is my friend. We shared a seat on the bus. Played chess at recess. Now he's always with George first. Working on secret projects. May 20th. Something Good by Sydney Cosley. Something good is going to happen this summer. I can feel it. It's in the heat, the sun on my arms, the way kids rush out the door when school is over for the day. I like the book because how it went to the different teachers in the video. Uh, I think my favorite character was probably Ben because he liked the beats and he liked the outside. And I kind of like outside and having a beat all the time. And the book was good and it was getting to a really good spot. 
competition didn't go through, and everybody was sad, and I like the book. My favorite character is Edward, um, because he likes reading, and his parents are divorced, and he was moving, because it relates to my family. We moved here from Texas, and a long time ago, and my parents are divorced. What did you like most about uh, this book? Um, all the teachers, like they didn't show just the character. They showed all the teachers and different teachers and they showed all the characters' names and the teachers were reading it. Is this the first time that you've uh, listened to a read aloud of teachers here at MES? Yes. Would you like something like this to go on every year? Sometimes. Was it fun to have this while we were um, in remote learning? Yes. Were you able to watch this at home with your family? Yes. Did anybody else in your family listen in and enjoy it? Um, my mom liked it because it was really funny and cool. And she gets to see, um, see all the teachers and learn all the teachers. What did you like most about this book? Have you ever seen a read aloud book like this from a staff? No, I haven't. It was really cool about how the staff did it. If you had to choose one of the staff members that was the funniest during this read aloud, who would it be? Um, probably you. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, would you be encouraged to participate or listen to something like this again? Yes, I would love that. Have you thought about writing a poem or anything? Fantastic. Okay. Oh, and here's just some uh, quotes that we got from kids. And I'll tell you this, it was a really good um, turnout from our parents and our kids. And uh, we you know, couldn't thank our students enough for really putting their hearts into this and paying attention and watching us during remote learning and the teachers following up in the classroom. It's been a great project. And that was a team effort, so thank you. Thank you, Curtis. That was fabulous. I love that. Oh, smiles. Uh, the next item on the agenda is public comment. And Dr. Parker, uh, do we have public comment tonight? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. We have right. six. Oh, go ahead. Yes, ma'am, we have six public comments tonight. I will make a, a general statement then before we go into the public comment, which you will read, right? <laughs> You'll read, right. Um, I don't have the general statement. I will. If you I mean, I meant you read the public comment. Yes, ma'am, I will. I didn't phrase that correctly. Uh, the Dare County Board of Education welcomes comments from our parents, students, and community. The public comment period is open for members of the public, including parents and students, to voice compliments, concerns, or complaints about performance of school personnel, implementation of board policy, and the quality of education programs or school facilities. Each person or organization is granted three minutes for his or her presentation. This portion of the meeting is for the board to hear matters of interest from the public. However, obscene, vulgar, or profane statements and statements reasonably perceived to be disruptive or imminently threatening to the orderly operation of the meeting shall not be permitted. And now, Dr. Parker, will you read the public comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank Didn't you, Madam confusing. Chairman. Um, our first comment this evening is from Christy Moeb, and this is the comment. I am concerned with the safety of my student and his learning while in school. With all the closings and reopenings of school, how feasible is this to continue in such a manner? When my child tells me he is scared to be in school, it concerns me as a parent. There are not enough going, going to be enough subs willing to come into a building when so many classes have already been in quarantine. 
How is this providing consistent academic instruction on top of during the days he is in school? They take mass breaks, which I'm grateful for them to have, but adding up three breaks each day they're in school, that is an hour each time on top of electives and lunch. I'm not sure how effective them being in school is on top of the holidays and coming and families that want to travel and want to visit or have holidays together with their grandparents, how will they be able to do so if they are in quarantine? Our next public comment is by Mika Manson. And this is the comment. I work from home remotely with a flex schedule, so I'm available to help out my friends that do not have flex schedules to shuffle their kids back and forth to school and sports. I'm very concerned with the spread of COVID and the schools closing every other week because of an exposure. It is endangering everyone that comes in contact at the schools and the friends like me that just want to help because the parents can't keep up with the erratic schedule. The kids were settled in place with the routine, as were the rest of us. It's time to go back to remote learning and to stop trying to make this hybrid school attempt work. It sounded okay in the beginning, and everyone was excited to get back to some normalcy, but this is anything but normal, and the hybrid school schedule has failed miserably. It's time to call it. Our next um, public comment is submitted <coughs> um, by George Carver on behalf of the DARE Minority Coalition Incorporated. It has come to our attention in the black community that Carl Woody was reprimanded for using a racial slur to a former employee. That is also documented. We, the DARE Minority, Minority Coalition, and the NCNAACP are calling to action as a community to condemn this publicly. This is already a stressful time for communities of color as racist hate groups steadily rise in America. Having a person with this mindset involved in decisions over our children's education and experience in the school system is disheartening. Carl Woody should recuse himself if he has racial bias for black and brown people immediately. Our next comment is from Judy Cage, and she says, please return the entire district of grades six through 12 to remote learning. The 100 plus students on two week quarantines have been extremely disruptive to the learning process. And our next comment is from Teresa Edwards. As a teacher currently in the hybrid plan, I would like to express my concerns about our current situation. Teachers and administrators are going above and beyond to make each day run as smoothly as possible. With the typical flu and cold season upon us, partnered with the recent quarantine numbers on the rise for staff, teachers and administration <coughs> will continue to be stretched beyond limits. That part of the plan is not sustainable. In my opinion, the option to return to remote should be brought to the table sooner than later. As we wait for the governor's next recommendation, we need to consider our local situation first Thank you for the opportunity to express my feelings and concerns. And our final comment tonight is from Carrie Hausnick. I would like the board members to be made aware of the difficulty it is getting of the difficulty in getting subs in the building when staff are out. I am really concerned because it's not even winter, which is when teachers will be out for other illnesses like the flu, strep or other illnesses, as well as co the coronavirus. Teachers are stepping up to cover during our planning periods because that is what teachers do. However, how long can this be sustained? How long can teachers teach through their planning periods with the extra requirements of hybrid and additional requirements needed to ensure quarantine students are getting the instruction they need? 
I just wanted you all to know and be aware of the teachers being spread thin. Teachers will always band together and do what's best for the students, but I wanted you to know it will have its toll eventually. Thank you as always for allowing us to share our voice. Thank you for having the hard decisions and making hard, excuse me, thank you for having the hard discussions and making hard decisions with the students and staff's best interest at heart. You are appreciated. And Madam Chairman, that concludes the public comments we received. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Parker. And as always, we appreciate it when the public shares their concerns and their comments with us. I'm sorry, question? Yes, sir. Um, uh, Brian, may, may we entertain public comments from the floor since it's a virtual meeting? Brian? Well, uh, did you have a sign-up? Do we have a sign-up? We've had an electronic sign-up on our website under the Contact Us portion of our website since the um, pandemic began. Sorry. <laughs> May we make an exception? <laughs> That's just my advice, and it's, it's uh, you can do whatever you like. That's important. Um, well, I will make an executive decision then, <laughs> and. Uh, I will allow it. Thank you, Barbara. I'm Rob Ross. I'm one of your county commissioners. And I may have shared this with some of you before, but in the midst of all that I've heard, I just felt compelled to share it again. A public-private partnership called the Public School Forum conducts research and evaluations across the state of North Carolina for all 100 counties. In 2019, Dare County and the school system here ranked first out of 100 counties. In 2020, Dare County ranked second out of 100 counties. I just wanted to say to the board, Superintendent Farley, your staff, in the midst of this, I don't know whether you could call it a semi-war war zone time frame we're in, congratulations, thank you, thank you from the commissioners, thank you from the families here that you teach our kids, handle our kids, and do the very finest job that you can. And I just wanted to say well done and thank you. And I appreciate the exception. Thank you, Commissioner Ross. It's always good to have, uh, have good news. And we do applaud our, our, our teachers and our staffs. And they're doing a great job. So thank you very much. We have great schools here. And it's because a lot is due uh, to our partnership with the commissioners. So we appreciate what you do. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the consent agenda. Under the consent agenda this evening, we have a personnel consent. We have the minutes from October 1st, 2020 special meeting, October 13th, 2020 special meeting, October 13th, 2020 regular meeting. We have a, a budget amendment under finance, and we have a donation uh, from the Charles W. Gaddy and Lucy Finch Gaddy Endowment Fund for Manio Middle School. Madam Chair, may we approve the consent agenda? There's a motion on the floor from Ms. Balance. A second. And a second from Mr. Hester. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Dr. Farley, we'll come back to you now for our reports and items for information. Thank you, Ms. Best Knight. So as a procedural um, uh, recognition with the Board uh, approving the consent agenda with the donation from Charles W. Getty and Lucy Finch Getty Endowment Fund from Manio Middle School. Uh, now that that's been approved, uh, <laughs> we'd like to do a special recognition and I'll ask Principal Tammy Harper to come forward. Ms. Harper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Principal Harper and myself would like to um, uh, thank publicly uh, Mr. Finn and Nancy Getty who are here with us tonight. And we also want to thank the foundation for their generosity, uh, the endowment fund for their generosity of uh, giving to Mandio Middle School $100,000. Uh, 
um, and that is um, outstanding and amazing. And we are um, we're speechless when um, the donation was was offered to us, and that really does show the the amazing partnership we have with the school system in our community. But this money is going to go to support the educational initiatives at Menio Middle School. And it's going to be used um, to further the shooting team that is there, the um, aquaponics research that goes on in the CTE classes, the library, um, and it will also go to video and technology support purchases and also to fund many grants and field trips for the teachers and the students. Um, so we're beyond um, thankful and grateful for this generosity um, from the endowment fund and we would like to now ask um, Finn and his wife Nancy to come forward and we'd love to take your photograph and recognize you. Please come forward. Do you have That's other all. items? That's it. Okay. That's all. Okay. Um, again, Nancy and Finn from the board, we uh, it's, that is an incredible gift for our students, and we so appreciate that. That support can make a big difference for a lot of our students. Uh, the next item on our agenda is uh, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? No, ma'am. Okay. Under new business tonight, <coughs> we have um, – the Manio High School roof replacement phase two, and is Mr. Mergain is he? Is he going to? Uh, he's on duty at Manio Elementary School, leading right. our sanitizing <laughs> he, and sanitizing. He's cleaning with that efforts. Clorox 360 right. machine over there now. Okay, yes. I'll pinch it. So you're going to pinch it for yep. him. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before the board tonight is the Manio High School roof replacement phase two. Uh, this project will complete the entire um, roof at Manio uh, High School. Uh, proposals were received on October 20th, 2020 for the Manual High School Phase 2 roof project budgeted in the board's capital improvement plan. Three bids were received for the proposed project. The qualified low responsive bid was Lefebvre's Construction Company with a bid of $888,600. Engineering construction administration fees to oversee this project are $74,000. And an estimated cost of $55,000 is requested to replace a single rooftop unit during the duration of the project. This means the total cost of Manual High School's Phase Two project is $1,012,600. This project is pending capital improvement plan approval and the funding from our Dare County Commissioners with the anticipated placement on their agenda for their November 16th meeting. Okay. We're glad the commissioners are here tonight to hear we that. We are, <laughs> and we are very <laughs> thankful. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Absolutely. Mr. Tall. I have a bid from Mr. Tauber. I meant bid. <laughs> you bidding on this. A motion from Mr. Tauber and a second from from. Judge, you have eighty-eight. Eight hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. That'd be good, Joe. That'd be good. We are accepting donations. <laughs> uh, okay. Motion from Mr. Tauber and a second from Ms. Balance. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously.
Thank you. The next item under new business is the approval of amended operations agreement for the Run Hill Ridge affordable housing for teachers with the Dare County or the Dare Education Foundation. And uh, Dr. Farley, you're doing this as well? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so before the, the board tonight is the amended agreement um, enclosed in the board packet is the DEF Run Hill Ridge operations agreement. Um, there's an exhibit, um, uh, RHR operating amendment, and then there's an exhibit with a long list of um, items that Derrick County Schools facility and maintenance team uh, will take on with board approval uh, this evening. So a summary is that the Dare Education Foundation has pre previously had a property management company that took care of the maintenance of the Run Hill Ridge uh, teacher apartment complex. And um, about uh, six months ago, um, DEF and the property management company parted ways. Um, they put out a request for a proposal. DEF was not satisfied uh, with staying within the um, means of their budget um, with the um, submissions. And so they approached uh, Mr. Gerganis, our director of facilities, and I um, with members of their housing committee to discuss uh, what their county schools had previously done in taking care of the maintenance um, of the facility. And um, uh, we were uh, excited when the uh, DEF proposed that we they would fund an additional position for our maintenance and facility team. <clears throat> so the way this will work with board approval is uh, the Dare Education Foundation will put uh, $30,000 to a full-time position. Dare County Schools will put the other $30,000. It's not a $60,000 position in North Carolina public schools. When you are projecting the cost of a, of a position, you typically build $14,000 dollars in for benefits and, and um, uh, retirement benefits. And so it's about a 46, 40,000, $47,000 uh, base position. And the advantage for DEF is they have fixed cost and um, have a top notch uh, facilities team that will uh, work on the property as needed. And the high advantage for Dare County Schools is hiring a full time uh, employee who will be a part of our maintenance and facilities team, uh, which is sorely needed needed and something that we've been trying to aim for an additional position in that department since I've been superintendent um, now four years. Um, fortunately, uh, we we're able to pay for Dare County Schools end of this um, with the over $700,000 that I've cut in central office positions in the last year. Um, we intend to advertise a licensed plumber position um, to add to the array of skills and abilities that we have in our maintenance team where we currently do not have a licensed plumber. And then dependent upon the project, um, Mr. Gerganis will uh, uh, work with um, Ms. Davidson, the F Housing Committee, um, and the superintendent in uh, allotting uh, members of the facilities team to take on certain projects uh, based upon what the need is. So win for DF, big win for Dare, uh, Dare County Schools, and um, uh, that's a summary um, of um, what this looks like. And you, as you've had a chance to review the agreements, it's brief, but the list of duties and responsibilities we have is, is quite long. But fortunately, we have a lot of talent in that department, and this allows us to add a highly needed position. Madam Chair, I move we approve the amended operation agreement for Run Hill Ridge affordable housing for teachers with the Dare Education Foundation. A motion on the floor from Mr. Pretty and a second for Ms. Lawler. Any discussion? I just want to say this is just a really another great example of how our communities really step up to work together to provide what's necessary for our children and it's a really and our teachers for the housing and it's just another I just it's just great to see how hard and how diligently everybody works together to take care of each other here. Absolutely, and the Dare Education Foundation, which Mr. Twitty and Mr. Tauber sit on the uh, board of directors, um, and several of us, I know Ms. Lawler's on one of our committees, um, several board members have been. Um, the partnership is outstanding, and uh, the leadership of, of uh, the Education Foundation and all of our community members who give up a lot of time uh, to make it work is, mm -hmm. is uh, excellent. So yes. I second um, Ms. Bell's thoughts, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Any other discussion, comments? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda are chairman's re remarks. Um, uh, I would like to start my remarks by thanking Mr. Hess for filling in in the seat um, for us. Um, 
uh, for how, how many months has it been, Harvey? <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> it might seem that way. <laughs> You've been here for a lot of major decisions. <laughs> However, as a company, I've been at Santa Cruz three or four years. Yeah, well, good. Well, good. Well, we appreciate your contributions. Uh, yeah, I have some other comments. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, and I want to thank you for allowing me this moment of some personal reflection. Um, this has been a good run, and this is my final Board of Education meeting, and it's kind of ironic. We thought we would be at Manuel Elementary School, and that's where I started my career with Dare County Schools as a teacher at Manuel Elementary School. And um, if we hadn't had to deep clean the building, we'd be there tonight. <laughs> Uh, I've had 47 years of dedication and service to the students of Dare County, and I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of my record, and I'm proud of what I did as a teacher and a board member. Um, in my career as a teacher and on the board, students, as you all know, have always come first. I've been a real champion for student success, and I am very confident that Dare County students will continue to succeed. Um, our families in Dare County, as we've mentioned tonight, uh, support our schools, and they support their children. And working together, anything is possible. I want to say to the Dare County teachers who may be listening and those of you who are here, you are the best. And never underestimate your power. As a teacher, I was the spokesperson for the MES school improvement team way back when in the plea to the Dare County commissioners to build a new school. And they had already invested about a billion dollars in building an addition. <laughs> they listened to my impassioned speech and my follow-up calls and visits. And I had the opportunity to teach in that new building, which is there today. It's not so new anymore. <laughs> As a part of that package, renovations were done also at Kitty Hawk School and at Cape Hatteras Secondary School. As a board member, I worked for about, I guess about three years to secure funding for that much needed addition at Manny Elementary School. And last year, I introduced the commissioners to the possibility of purchasing a corner of that school property for, to prepare for the future. I'm proud of the work we've done to improve our academic courses and our vocational uh, education. We have really grown that. And our school system owes a huge thank you to our commissioners, and I'm glad you're here to hear this. They have been more than generous in their funding and their support of our schools. Someone complimented me recently by saying that my greatest, or this person thought my greatest accomplishment as board chair had been repairing and strengthening the partnership between the Board of Education and the Board of Commissioners. And I so appreciate the very positive working relationship we have shared. To Dr. Farley and his team. Give me a minute. You are amazing. The work you have done since your first day is outstanding. One of my proudest accomplishments as board chair is leading the board in the search for the right superintendent. For months, most of this board and Rich Swartz of the finest law firm in North Carolina were practically joined at the hip as we studied applications, as we held interviews, and we debated the merits of each candidate. We got it right. Thank you, Dr. Farley, for your leadership, your attention to detail. your compassion for every student, for every family, and every employee of Dare County Schools. Dare County is so fortunate to have wonderful administrators and a wonderful central office staff who are committed to excellence. And to this board, it has been my distinct honor to serve with you. Your passion for education in Dare County is sec second to none. I'll be okay. <laughs> you entrusted me to lead you, but we have always been a team, and, a, and every voice has been heard. Together, we have forged a path to greatness for Dare County Schools, and I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader as you continue to lead our schools with the dedication of our students and staff and what they deserve. It's been a true privilege to serve Dare County Schools. And I give you my heartfelt thanks to every single one of you 
for your overwhelming support and love. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, I got a little choked up. <laughs> I practiced. <laughs> please. Thank you, Dr. Parker. So this plaque is a very small token of thanks to B. Bass Knight. It says, in recognition of B. Bass Knight for dedicated service as a member of the Dare County Board of Education, July 2008 through December 2020. In appreciation for your commitment to improving the quality of education in Dare County and for the many accomplishments achieved under the Board of Education goals. No, you stay. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you can tell by the tears and the shrivel in your voice how much you care. And I've just played, a, I've been one of the lucky few of the thousands of students, employees, and community members who've been impacted by you, Miss Bass Knight. As a teacher, you reached hundreds and thousands of students. As a Board of Education member, you've reached a lot of adults, and you've reached an entire community. And I can't thank you enough. The relationship between a superintendent and the board chair, sometimes in some places, can be rocky and difficult. And in my case, I've been a very fortunate person to have you as a, a mentor, a friend, a colleague, and I will tell you, I've never, I've been in education 28 years, I've never seen a Board of Education member who's been more dedicated morning, noon, night, 24 seven, when you didn't have to every single time, you answered the call every single time and your dedication has been unbelievable. I can't thank you enough, my team can't thank you enough and you are gonna be sorely missed. And we want you rooting with us in, along the way and um, we, we can't say thank you enough to be best night. You're a wonderful person, a wonderful leader. Chairman Woodard. Thank you, John. I wrote a bunch of notes here, and uh, um, I think I'll just throw them aside because it's, it's got to come from here, but it came from there anyway. But um, B, and I, I don't want to call you uh, the chair. I want to talk to you as a friend. I may lose it like you did. Uh, wasn't, so, wasn't so easy about eight years ago when, when the Board of Commissioners was working with the school board. And we, and we formed a five on five. And um, that is the chair of the Dare County Board of Commissioners, the chair of the school board, and uh, finance officer, the, the uh, county manager and the superintendent, and two board members. And that was the best thing we've ever done, B. And uh, I'm very, very proud of that fact that we have built a coalition. Uh, Commissioner Ross said it. Uh, uh, Superintendent Farley has said it. Dare County second to none. I mean, we're blessed. God knows we are blessed in this community for the, the teachers that we have and the, and the personnel that we have. Um, you asked, Harvey asked a minute ago if, if, if you were finished and you said, no, I got a few extra comments. And he's, so I have something that I want to say because you asked him, uh, you know, how long? And he said, well, it's felt like a couple of years. Um, 
he was a history teacher. He was nothing in math. <laughs> so, unlike B, teaching the fifth grade, 47 years. Well, well I know, but, but well, that's what I know. It's a combination of, of, of teaching and 12 on the board. I mean, that's a long time. That's a long time. I know. That's what I know. Um, she had... She had to teach Harvey. She had to teach math. She had to teach English. I'm sure social studies and a lot of other things. Um, that's right. I wish that I'd have had her as a teacher. I wouldn't be, probably have had to repeat the fifth grade three times. Um, I was a slow learner. Um, everybody in this room Everybody in this room can remember a teacher either in elementary school, high school, or college. You're that teacher, Big. I have one teacher that I remember, and you are that teacher, in my case, it was a first grade. Her name was Miss Benthal. But every single person in this room, I guarantee you, has that one person they remember, and it is you. Um, the, um, the relationships, as I said, that we've had has just been incredible. And um, I just say on behalf of the Dare County Board, Board of Commissioners how appreciative we are of you and your leadership. Uh, under your leadership, look what we've got. There's nobody in this state that compared to the superintendent, Dr. Farley, or the staff that he has brought with him and brought to Dare County. It's second, and I, once again, I said we're so incredibly fortunate, and, and, and I thank you for that leadership. And you're right. You called me one morning and said, Mom, there's a piece of property in Manio we need to look at. And we need for the future of the school in Manio. So I got with the board and talked to the board, and sure enough, we purchased that piece of property. But that's the relationship that we have amongst the Board of Commissioners and the Board of Education. And I, I could not be more grateful. I could not be more grateful. And then last but not least, just from a personal point of view, um, you have always supported me, B. You have, I, I treasure your friendship. Um, and I thank you for that. And God bless you. You're going to be missed. I love you. Do you want to do a picture, Pete, uh, Keith, then we'll do comments from uh, other board members? Okay. If the board wants to come forward. Yes. <laughs> right. This is beautiful, and I. I can't talk again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We would also like to recognize Board Member Harvey Hess, who came onto the board and served. Um, when the absence was created, when Mr. Sproul left the board. Uh, Mr. Hess, we want to thank you for your commitment and dedication to the board. We'd like you to come forward and receive this plaque on behalf of your service.
Is it? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, math notwithstanding, um, the service on this board has been a, um, a distinct pleasure, and and it's been a it's been it's been a very interesting year, a very very uh, a special year, and I'm really glad to have been able to spend the time with these board members these other six board members here, um, every one of which uh, is their county. Um, everybody helped me. They helped it, but um, it was going to be a good conversation. It was difficult. She's got the on the phone. To make was uh, in core and that had served. And looked at. Wow. Last night, as a kind, wonderful, beautiful person, notwithstanding, you know your leadership here, but just as a kind, wonderful, beautiful person. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. B, I was one of the students in the elementary school when you were teaching. I didn't have you as a teacher, but I do remember seeing you going up and down the classroom and in the hallway. So um, we go back, way, way back with family and friends. We do. And uh, the last four years working with you on the board has been a pleasure. And um, I appreciate everything you've done the 47 years for our students and staff in many, many ways. So I hope you and Saint will enjoy each other more. Thank you. I appreciate that. B, it's been an honor serving with you. When I moved back home, before I even considered doing anything with the Board of Education, I would always see you involved in other community activities. So you were not just diligent in this, but you're diligent in many other things. And the one thing about observing you is you're always the same. I appreciate that. You're constant, true, and... Um, you allow people to voice their opinion, and you're quick to listen and slow to speak, and I appreciate that. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate that very much. I might, I might be able to get through this. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know. Thank you for your leadership. <laughs> I don't know if you don't look it. at me. <laughs> Well, it's your grace and your poise and how well you bring people together and lead the fight is just. I get it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all the kind comments. And I'm, I'm going to really miss y'all, but I'm just a phone call away. And I'll thank my little, my little eight-year-old grandson who said, well, BB, now you'll be at home all day for me, <laughs> so that's 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 a silver lining for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much, uh, Bob. Appreciate all that you've done for me and helped me. And like I said, I just uh, could not have worked with a better group of people than this. So thank you all so much. Yes, absolutely, Brian. We'll make an exception for you. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and, and, and I, I, I <laughs> touche. <laughs> um, 
and I wish Richard Schwartz were here too, or both of us, because uh, uh, he'd have a lot more to say, would say it more eloquently than I would. But uh, both Richard and I and the entire firm have just greatly enjoyed working with you. Um, again, your, your tact and your, your poise brings people together. Every conversation we've ever had has been about the kids. It's always about doing the right thing. And we, we started representing this board back in the 1990s. And the relationship with the commissioners was not the same. I can recall a time where the, the Board of Education got up and walked out of the commissioners' meeting. And if it's got to be done, it's got to be done. But that's not the way to do it. And I, I credit your leadership for bringing those two public bodies together and working together. And you, uh, you owe every, you deserve every uh, accolade you get. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, so much. Okay, and we will, I will entertain a motion to. <laughs> There's a motion from Mr. Twitty to adjourn and a second from Harvey. Okay, uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank y'all.